Welcome to This Week in Marymount Warriors Athletics here on MarymountSports.com and ESP Media powered by Sidearm Sports. My name is Jason Griefer. As always, we're joined by Marymount Athletic Director Tom Neural. Uh, Tom, we've been talking all season long about, you know, the, the traveling adventures of yourself. And uh, we're back in the office today here. Back in the office. It's a, yeah, it's a busy office day. Uh, followed by a busy outside day so we're going to be we're going to be all over the planet again getting fields ready um, but just a slow start I think I think coach Parker put a screw in the tire yesterday so we're uh, short on equipment right now oh, oh okay okay and and uh, we'll we'll see if we can get coach Parker to to respond to that maybe at some point in a later episode this season <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's get right into it here and uh, let's start uh, on the diamond. Let's first talk about your uh, your uh, softball team here. As we've talked here, it's not been the easiest season for for them for sure. In a, in a very very good CHL uh, league title, not not within reach. Looks like it's going to come down to Wyoming or Taylor uh, to mm-hmm. win the league crown. But uh, you know, a good chance here potentially today on Tuesday to get a win over a St. Bernard Elmwood place, a team you beat handily. Uh, in the season opener there it looks like the weather's going to be beautiful today nice and warm uh, you'll get uh, then uh, Deer Park twice uh, later this week in the two games set there we look at the schedule and there's about a week and a half left in the regular season before we get set for uh, sectional play and, and potentially districts uh, beyond that uh, as we're evaluating things maybe from your perspective or in your conversations with the coaching staff uh, what are maybe a couple of things they're looking to get shored up as they head into this final stretch run of the regular season you know, we want to get the pitching short up. Um, you know, we've mentioned that earlier. The pitching's getting better. Um, it's just it's hard to do. You know, it's a it's a hard sport to pick up. And without having the season last year, it's getting that game day experience. Our our hitting, our throwing, our catching is is much improved. So just shoring it up, getting some key hits, trying to score some runs. Uh, like you said, we we handled St. Bernard earlier in the season. Want to get that one today, try to get some momentum getting into the weekend as we as we start playing Deer Park and, and then a make up with Reading, got Madera next week. So, you know, that'll be a good series to look at with Madera. They're, they're similar to us. And then, uh, and then wrapping up the season with Wyoming and maybe we can steal a magic in the tournament. Hey, you never know, especially yeah. if you can get going at the right time. And today would be a good opportunity. Yeah. As we said, you, you handled St. Bernard uh, pretty well in the season opener. So good chance to get the bats going again, see if your pitching staff, as you said, can continue uh, to improve. Let's switch gears. Let's talk about your baseball team. Uh, they've put it together here as of late. They've won three of four uh, going into a two game set with uh, Deer Park this week and Madeira uh, early next week before we talk again. Uh, I want to talk about one of your players in particular, Junior Quinn Benner, who has been very good for you, uh, not only in the field, but also on the mound here. He's hitting over 400 as a as a batter but also pitching wise he leads the chl right now with 29 strikeouts and only 18 and two-thirds innings i mean these mm-hmm. are like araldus chapman type numbers to average that many strikeouts uh per innings pitched right there in evaluating him either for your, through your own two eyes or again talking to the coaching staff uh, which side has been more impressive to you his his offense or the way he's been pitching on the mound you know, you look at his pitching and some of the adversity that he's gone through because he has not given up a lot of runs. I think the runs he's given up have been unearned. Uh, he's a commit to the University of Charleston already, uh, you know, as a junior. So, um, you know, he, he's done well with that. He's like you said, he's 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 uh, he's come through with a bat. You know, yesterday you have Michael Napolitano go on the mound. They need some distance. He hits a three-run homer <clears throat> to put us up a little bit more. Andrew Glassmeyer hitting with a legitimate over 500 in the league. So, you know, our upperclassmen are taking the lead, and that's what we have been talking about we, we need them to do. Um, the schedule has softened up a little bit earlier, and, um, and now we need to go on that late season run and hope that the Taylors, the Wyomings, um, uh, the Indian Hills all beat up on each other for a while. Maybe we can slide in there uh, as we move up in the standings. But, uh, again, a, a big week of baseball this week. Uh, we moved our uh, our Deer Park game from tomorrow to today with based, based on the forecast. Uh, and then two with Deer Park, two with Madeira, and, and wrapping things up. So looking to go on a run here with these guys. Um, the upperclassmen are starting to get hot, and that's what we need. Yeah, especially late in the season. You look at the comp league standings well. You're tied with Deer Park uh, right now for fifth in the league, just a couple of games uh, behind Madeira. And we talked about mm-hmm. you're going to see them uh, early next week. So a real good opportunity to move up. Uh, there as well you know you've got Wyoming at the top right now everybody chasing them 
and they'll be taking on Taylor. So that'll be a big one that could impact things in the standings as well. Let's move on to the tennis courts here. And they have a very, very busy week uh, coming up this week as well. You look at the schedule right as it stands right now. Of course, things can change. Uh, Madeira, Baden, of course, the coach's classic uh, over the weekend here. They continue to play well, you know, beating Moeller four to one. So it's two straight wins over GCL schools. So y- you like that for sure. So things going well right now. They're another program. It's still got a couple of weeks to go for the end of the regular season, but I have to imagine, especially the way they've been playing lately, they've got to be feeling pretty good uh, heading into this week. And in particular, the coaches classic No. Yeah, they are. They're, they're playing very well. And I think we're in a higher uh, flight of the tournament than we normally are for the coaches classic this week. So it'll be interesting to see um, what we can do in that field. You're right. A couple wins over GCL schools. We won't be applying uh, for membership to GCL anytime soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> even though we took care of middle cross and a few other ones, but, but no, we're, yeah. we'll stay in the CHL. So we'll do that. But you know, the boys are having a great season. They're playing well. Um, you know, in, in spite of having last year off, you know, we keep going back to last year and, you know, some schools struggling, some teams um, are doing well, um, but yeah. they are the season and they, uh, they just really play well together. So it's really good for our, to see our tennis team have the season that they are having. And yeah, very strong. And it's a, another program that getting things going at the right time late in the regular yeah. season. That, and that's what you want. Uh, yeah, we're, and we're you, close to the draw in these tournaments. And so, you know, these, yeah. these, these, these wins this week are very important as a draw start happening next week. For yeah, definitely four. change. Yeah. It could change a lot of things as far as the postseason draw, potentially make things easier as far as the draw goes or more, or more difficult, mm-hmm. depending on how, on how they perform, but the way they've been playing, you have to think yeah. it's going to be, it can help make it, things a lot easier for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, looking at uh let's move to a track and field here and they've got a busy week coming up here. Uh, meet scheduled, uh, this week, Kings and Milford on Wednesday. We'll see how much Mother Nature plays a factor uh, into that one as uh, rains in the forecast there. Y- you look at the way these two meets are setting up on back-to-back days. Is this an instance where the coaches are maybe just trying to get that one final push out of your track and field athletes, knowing that they only have one more regular season meet after this next week before you get to the CHL championships? Yeah, because well, our split our squad, we, we very rarely take the same athletes to back-to-back squads. And so um, Coach Dragovich splits the squad pretty well, um, and depending on which, uh, how, depending on which one's running with which that day. But we have a number of runners, and so we're in more meets than we're normally in just to get everyone some action. And then, as you said, next week on Wednesday, we come back for our own McKee uh, Invitational uh, sponsored by Tri-State Running, and so that's going to be a, a fun meet. It's going to be senior day for our seniors to come in and and recognize them for their careers. Um, so yeah, just just wrapping things up, and then and then it's uh, the the district meet, and then on the regionals on the state. So you know, hopefully we have a handful of athletes going to those those events as well. As you said, we're you know as we're recording this, eight days away from the McKee Invitational that, mm-hmm. that you're hosting there, so you have a, a number of schools coming in this far out, just over a week ahead of time. What what kind of preparations are you are you and your staff undertaking to make sure that when the day arrives, that uh, we're not going to have any issues and the event can go off without a hitch? We just make sure everyone coming pays their entry fee. That's a joke, and then <laughs> that'll help. That'll help. That'll help. <laughs> Lining up all the workers for it, uh, making sure we're all ready to go. The junior high meet last week was a good, a good warm up for it. One thing we did, we we did learn with the junior high meet, is there's a lot of parents that want to come out and see their kids run this year, um, because the weather is good, because there was no season last year, so we were a little caught by surprise by the size of the crowd. Um, so we're expecting another big crowd next week, keeping them socially distanced, of course, and masked while they're in the stadium. Um, but just yeah, everything else just runs itself. It's automated timing anymore. Um, that makes it easy. This used to be a two day meet. Now it's down to one day. Um, we run everything as a final. So yeah, we're ready to go. We're, we're excited for it. It's the only home meet that the, the track athletes get during the season. So, uh, we're excited. We're ready. We're ready for it to start at this juncture. How many schools do you plan on having come to this event? We have 12, including our own. So, uh, the junior high meet was 12. This one's 12. Uh, I think back in the heyday, I think we had, I think we had 18. It's, we have a six lane track. And so multiples of six work well uh, for planning to meet, but um, we were one of the only two day meets uh, three years ago and everyone else was going mm-hmm. to a one day meet. So instead of running a Wednesday, Thursday, we, we cut it down to Wednesday. 
Um, kids kind of love that as well. They get an, an extra day off or a day to train during the week. And then it's just enough to get them ready. Um, I think we're the last meet before the district meets. So um, it, it's good planning mm -hmm. and, and um, we like it where it is. Let's move on. Let's talk about your lacrosse teams here. Let's start with the boys first. You know, they've got a couple games uh, coming up here a little bit later on uh, in the week. You're going to have uh, Henry Clay come up from Lexington, Kentucky and, ho and host them. Uh, scheduled for Wednesday, and we'll see what Mother Nature has in store for them. And then also uh, Indian Hill uh, coming up this Friday. Coming off of a, a, a right now, a couple losses. We talked about the St. X one uh, last week, but then uh, last Wednesday, a 13-6 uh, loss to a Springboro. So now they've had what will be a week off uh, in between matches right there. What have you been able to see, and what are the coaches trying to been trying to focus on with the kids during this layoff so as to not prolong the losing streak any any more beyond two yeah it's just it's just a tough streak I and mean, saying x is good springboro's good um and actually the henry clay me uh, henry clay game has been canceled they are okay. they are injuries right now so okay. that gives us till friday uh with the indian hill indian hill doesn't have a jv so we'll play our varsity game at seven on on friday or at six on friday um, and so you know, we had the option of adding a game in there, and we just thought with where we are physically with our team, we're a little beat up, we're a little battered. Um, there's some things we need to work on. So, so we, we will take the extra time uh, with prom being last weekend. Not a whole lot happens on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, so we took the extra time just to, to circle the wagons a little bit, refocus on some of the fundamentals, uh, and just mentally get right. And so that's the big rivalry game Friday with Indian Hill at 6. And uh, and hopefully the boys are ready. We're we're starting to get some of the guys who are who are banged up back into the rotation. So um, uh, that'll be good to see where we are on Friday with Indian Hill. And a big how game. important? Yeah, absolutely. How how important will it get, that game be for those kids who are coming back off injury to sort of knock the rust off, if you will, and try and get back to as close to 100 percent as possible? Given the fact that this is a you know, like most spring sports, we're at the tail end of the regular season. Yeah, you know, it's a rivalry game, and so um, it's probably the rivalry game for them in lacrosse. They, mm -hmm. The kids will be ready. You, know, you can't bring someone in at 50% or 70% and say, hey, take it easy out there. So uh, their their engines are going to be running pretty well uh, for that one. Uh, we, we still have two weeks in the season. We have another week before the draw. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's a good time to write the ship. Our losses have, have been to Division One teams. We've handled ourselves in Division Two. So hopefully that hopefully that judges well for us when the draw comes. Um, but yeah, just just to get some W's back on our belt, get the scoring back uh, back in line with where we think it should be. Um, but again, Friday night's going to be a big game. It's going to be a nice crowd. Um, just just a good way to kick off the weekend. And it looks like uh, weather's going to cooperate as well. Yeah. So get it, get a chance to get out there, uh, folks. Get out there and uh, support those kids. Should be a good one there for sure. Let's move over to the girls' side here and. Uh, bouncing back after that uh, loss to Owen Tangy Liberty, which we talked about uh, last mm -hmm. week here, get two, two nice wins on the road against Oakwood and Turpin. So three out of four there, on, or excuse me, four in a row on the road there. Yeah. They go three and one in that stretch. So that's good sitting at eight and two uh, on the season. They're next scheduled to be in action this coming Saturday uh, against St. Francis de Sales, who will make the trek down there. And then two more on the road, uh, starting with uh, Springboro next Tuesday and then Wyoming next Thursday. So six out of seven on the road right now, but they mm -hmm. will get home uh, this coming Saturday here. Uh, another situation where they've had some time off as well. By the time this, the match Saturday arrives, they're going to have a nine-day layoff yep. uh, in, in between there. So feeling good coming off of the, the wins against Oakwood and uh, uh, Turpin right there. What are your expectations for the girls, given they've had such a long layoff and also the fact that they're getting ready now for a stretch of six six games in 12 days to close the regular season. Yeah, you know, it's it's nice getting back on that regular rotation of, of Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday games, because um, a lot of that is what you face when you get to the tournament. So um, that run there will be good for them to get into. This the sales match is going to be a, a big match for them because, that's a, again, that's a team that we usually see a little bit later in the tournament. Um, they follow us. We follow them. And so, um, yeah, the, the layoff's going to be good. We're going to have fresh legs. Uh, it's, an, it's an afternoon game, so we're not battling the evening sun. If, you, if you've ever seen a game in Coosal Stadium um, this early in the season, if, if you're facing west, 
your, your goalkeeper has their work cut out. So it's an afternoon game. We don't have any sun aided goals on that one. Um, so we're going, this is going to be a really good gauge for us to see what else we need to tune up in time for the tournament. And then, like you said, we get on that Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday routine to get ready for the tournament. And then the draw is going to start. Um, so we really think this is, is a good setup for us for the tournament draw, hopefully to capture that number one seed and, uh, and, and host a lot of games here in the postseason. I want to talk about one of your players in particular, and I believe we've talked about her in the past here, and that's Marley McGowan and the season she continues to have up right now, second in the, in the league in goals with 33. She's fifth in the league in assists with 12. She's fourth in the league in draw controls with 32 mm -hmm. and leads the league with 14 uh, cause turnovers. When you get a player like Marley who is getting it done both offensively and also defensively with all those cause turnovers, how much does that galvanize the rest of the roster seeing that Marley's doing it game in and game out? I, I think it excites the team. You know, you say, hey, you know, we, you know she got us another turnover. Or, hey, she got us another ground ball. Or, hey, we got another face off. And it, it puts the opposing team back on their heels a little bit. Um, but as a senior having this type of season, it's and, and, and she's uh, she's really humble about on the field too. I mean, she's just a pleasure to watch. And so for the younger players to see uh, a senior lead the team like that, that also gives them something to aspire to be when they're a senior. So mm -hmm. it, it's great leadership on her part, and it's just really an energy starter for the rest of the team. And keep an eye out, Marymount fans, and looking at her career stats, she's 11 goals away from 100 career goals, yeah. uh, which is all more impressive given the fact that we didn't have a season a year ago. So she did it her freshman year, sophomore, and now senior. But looking around right now, 89 goals and only 46 games played. So mm -hmm. you do the math right there. She's been good uh, for your program really since she arrived on yeah. campus uh, a, a few years ago. So we'll be keeping an eye on that and to uh, see hopefully but before – our podcast season ends up here if she gets past that uh, 100 goal mark there. And lastly, before we let you go, and I gave you a heads up this before we started recording, and, and you kind of were wondering, oh gosh, where am I going to go with this here? Uh, the NFL drafts on Thursday, and you you were you kind of made note. Um, how are the Bengals going to uh, muff this up, uh, so to speak? Here, um, maybe I don't think David Klingler is eligible as we talked oh, about. Oh, this started, is we're start of us. Maddie sports fan, you know. Just. Yes, we, we we talked about that. Uh, Elliot Evil, who's running the logistics side of our podcast here today, told us he had to Google who it is because he's too young to know. And so uh, well, he'll, he'll be doing that. If no, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Or or, or Rob Evil, maybe Rob can give him a a, a yeah. lesson there as well. But uh, you know, the Bengals are picking fifth right here, so I wanted to get your thoughts on that. It looks like it's going to come down to likely either Panay Sewell, the, the tackle out of Oregon, because we got to protect Joe Burrow, because we saw what happened last year when they made no attempt to give Joe Burrow an offensive line, or perhaps Burrow's former LSU teammate, uh, Jamar Chase, and give him another weapon to supplant A.J. Green here, or perhaps maybe they look to move out there from that pick. Uh, what's your gauge on where the Bengals will go or maybe where they should go? You know, historically with the Bengals, if you, if you followed them over the year, I know Mike Brown's philosophy has always been to draft. To, you look at you, you think I'm going to come up with a gem here. Um, yeah, Mike Brown's philosophy has always been to draft the best athlete in the draft, um, mm -hmm. which, which, which serves you well. Um, you know, his father, when he founded the Bengals, took Bob Johnson, which was the center, played center for 11 years for the Bengals, was the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what they built their, their franchise around before they drafted Greg Cook. So uh, a little history for you there. And so, um, you know, I, I think they go with Chase. I think you take, I think you take one of the best athletes available. This this draft is heavy with linemen. There's there's eleven good linemen that are probably going to go in, in the first six rounds. Um, yeah, you take Chase or you trade down and you get uh, maybe you get you get two or three good linemen for the for the one draft pick. Um, you know, traditionally, first round offensive linemen. And I'll just say uh, Tony Tony Mandarich. Packers drafted him back in the eighties and, and he was, he was a can't miss miss. So um, the best prospect anyone's ever seen. Uh, yeah. The, 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 the best there never was. And so yep. uh, <laughs> you, know, you, you, you go into, and you look at it that way, you know, get as many linemen as you can get, but uh, I think you go with the best athlete on this one. You, you make your offense a little bit more explosive, especially, you know, losing the speed of John Ross and, and some of the other ones, Chad Johnson is not going to come back. 
They don't need to draft him. Um, <laughs> although he will come back from, from their uh, ring of honor show the, the other day. So yeah. yeah, take, take, take the receiver, take the speed, get down the lower rounds, build your lineman up there. And, uh, and, and Burrow's going to be fine. They've, they've added some pieces uh, already through free agency. They're going to draft a few more good linemen um, yeah. and, and things are going to be just fine. You know, yeah, you know, guy. People get banged up. It's it's a physical game. So uh, sure. yeah, your 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 top your top O line draft pick from two years ago, you know, tears up his chest one year and then blows out a knee last year. He has to start having some good luck, um, mm-hmm. and and then that's that's the basis for your line on the left side, and then they're ready to go. So yeah, they're they're going to draft well. They're going they're going to pick up twelve wins next year. They're going to go to the playoffs. They're going to lose an AFC title game on the road. Um, there you go. Predictions now. We'll pull that back up. <laughs> yeah, we'll 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 doc we'll document that for sure and save that yeah. uh, for the for the archives there. So yeah, I, I'm with you. I think they go team Chase, uh, Jamar Chase here. I yeah. think they should, given the fact there are so many, as you said, quality offensive linemen in particular. You can get a really good one in the second round yeah. who who can come in to start for you uh, yeah. right away here. Uh, la- lastly, here, uh, what do you think of the new uniforms? Upgrade, downgrade in the middle? Uh. Yeah, we, we can comment on a couple of them here. I, I like them. Um, you, know, I, I, you know, it's just enough of a change. We, we've got out of our 2014 or 2004 uniforms. Before that, I think the last upgrade uh, was was 1980-something. You, know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the uniforms I really want to get rid of are the reds, uh, red uniforms with reds in script. I get this little historical significance there. Let's get back to a traditional uniform. Put Cincinnati in the vertical arch on the uniforms. And, uh, and they, they, they haven't played well in the red jerseys with the script. They need to get rid of them. It's losing. Uh, just, oh, yeah. yeah. What, yeah what, was, what was wrong with the, what was wrong with the big red machine uniforms? Why did we have to change it from that? <laughs> as they clean as you could ask. Someone bought one. They need the fans to buy new, uh, new uniforms to wear to the game. So uh, yeah, what, what's yeah, old but, is new. And yeah, those script I'm uniforms. Go script here, and I'm just going to put a yeah. general shout out to, the Kevin yeah. Estledge over at Elder. I know he always wears purple, but I just wonder if he has bought one of those red script jerseys yet. So, you know, I'll find out from him probably in a couple of minutes. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not because those 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 are those are a, oh. a no go. Those yeah. are those are a no go for sure. So uh-huh. we'll see if maybe the Reds get smart and and get rid of that stuff for sure. And who knows? Maybe maybe they'll do something crazy and we can talk about it next week. Uh, here on the show but right now we are out of time so my thanks again to uh, tom neural athletic director at marymount high school joining us for this week and marymount warriors athletics here on marymontsports.com and esp media powered by sidearm sports